Aldebaran is a star that's not too dissimilar from our Sun. It has just 10% more mass and is a similar colour. It is however no longer on the main sequence and is one of our local giant stars. In a similar area of the sky, the famous Pleiades Cluster is also known as the Seven Sisters. That's because it contains a cluster of hot B-type stars in the northwest of the constellation Taurus. And at a distance of 444 light years, it is among the nearest star clusters to Earth. Hi everyone, Vega here, and after a brief break for work commitments, our channel is back and I'm delighted to bring you the next episode in our Brightest Star series, Aldebaran and the Pleiades, so let's get to it. Channel regulars will know that I'm a big fan of the Winter Hexagon. As winter rapidly approaches us in the Northern Hemisphere, we'll once again be able to see one of the most stunning asterisms of all, the Winter Hexagon that contains Rigel, Capella, Pollux, Procyon, Sirius, and of course Aldebaran. If we include Betelgeuse in the middle, it's really quite a stunning coincidence that half of the brightest stars in our skies are all in close proximity to each other. Coincidence gets even weirder though, because when you think that they're all actually on the freeway out of the Milky Way, that is to say they are on the opposite direction from the galactical centre, and far fewer stars can be found in that region. You might even argue that the weird astronomical phenomenon continues, when we look to the right of Aldebaran, we find the Pleiades Cluster, and it's actually also the nearest messier object to Earth, and that means that it's the most obvious star cluster to the naked eye in the night sky. When we look at the Pleiades Cluster, I've often thought it looks a bit like a mini Ursa Major, or Great Bear, perhaps you agree with me. The largest star, which has the designation Eta Tauri, is known as Alcyone. Like all the stars in the Pleiades, it's approximately 440 light years from the Sun, and is a blue-white B-type giant, similar to other bright B-type stars in the Pleiades cluster. The nine brightest stars are intrinsically named after the seven sisters of Greek mythology. Now, excuse my pronunciation, Sterope, Merope, Electra, Maya, Tigeta, Seleano, and Alcyone, along with their parents Atlas and Pleione. The cluster itself is slowly moving in the direction of the bottom of what is currently the constellation of Orion, and like most open clusters, the Pleiades will not stay gravitationally bound forever, and some component stars will be ejected after close encounters with other stars in a galactical dance, whereas others will be stripped by tidal gravitational fields. Calculations suggest that the cluster will take about 250 million years to disperse, with gravitational interactions with giant molecular clouds. With the spiral arms of our galaxy also hastening its demise, one day in the far future this family of young stars will be no more. Aldebaran itself lies on the right hand side of the winter hexagon, also known of course as Alpha Tauri. It has the nickname of the follower precisely because it follows the Pleiades cluster through the sky. Or at least that's what it appears to do so, but the truth is Aldebaran is a lot closer to us at just 65 light years distance. Aldebaran varies in brightness but is typically the 14th brightest star in the night sky and is one of, but not the nearest, giant star to the Sun. And just like Gemini's Pollux, which is, is actually the closest giant star to us, Aldebaran is substantially cooler than the Sun, and in many ways represents the future of our beautiful yellow star. Aldebaran's radius, for example, is 44 times that of the Sun, but being so large it's over 400 times as luminous. Like most giant stars, it spins slowly and takes 520 days to complete a rotation. Some of you may already know that the famous probe Pioneer 10 is heading in the general direction of the star. It should make its closest approach in about 2 million years from now, and it's quite interesting in the fact that Aldebaran, being as bright as it is, will dominate the skies of Pioneer 10 for many many millennia to come. Of course by then the Pioneer's batteries will have long since extinguished, in fact they've already extinguished anyway, and the probe is long dead, which is a shame, as within the Aldebaran system, there is believed to be a host planet several times the mass of Jupiter, and unsurprisingly it's been given the name of Aldebaran b. A giant exoplanet with at least 5.8 times the mass of Jupiter, it orbits at a distance of around 45% further than the Earth does from the Sun. Given Aldebaran's huge size, unfortunately that means it is almost a fireball, and the equilibrium temperature of the planet is likely to be around 1500 Kelvin. That said, when Aldebaran was a main sequence star, it's likely that the planet had an equilibrial temperature comparable to that of the Earth, which does make it very interesting, especially if it has or indeed had many exomoons, and it probably has, just like Jupiter and Saturn in our own system. 
Some may agree with me that in many ways, we should really be looking for giant planets within the habitable zones rather than small worlds for this very reason. For every solitary Earth we find in our solar system, there are many tens if not even hundreds of bodies in orbit around gas giants. In this graphic, we see a depiction of the slow increase in size of Aldebaran as it wreaks havoc on the Moon in orbit around Aldebaran B. As the temperatures rise, liquids slowly turn to gases, solids into liquids, and life on the planet begins a slow and possibly even painful death. Of course, it wouldn't happen overnight, and actually this would take millions of years, but you get the picture. In the distance, we see the Pleiades cluster, slightly brighter from Aldebaran, as they are of course closer, but remaining more or less untouched in the skies. We can speculate all we like about the Aldebaran B world and its moons, but unfortunately, and like many stars in our local area, Aldebaran is actually moving away from our solar system at a fairly brisk pace, and will slowly but surely dissipate back into the Milky Way. Aldebaran is a red giant star in the locality of our solar system. It forms part of the beautiful winter hexagon, and is in many ways a snapshot of the future of our own solar system. It follows a stellar nursery known as the Pleiades Cluster through our skies, and its largest star, Archeone, alongside its other members, will leave the nursery over the next 250 million years and start their voyage into the Milky Way. They'll dazzle most of the other stars that they come into contact with. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee, and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you'd like any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know, and it could just be your idea next week that shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.